welcome to the Astrodome in Houston, where today the Oilers go after victory number 12 this year. That would be the most in the history of their franchise. They play host to the Philadelphia Eagles, who would like to win their 11th game of the year, the most since 1949. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, along with Sonny Jurgensen. And Sonny, just moments ago, we checked the score. Pittsburgh is soundly defeating Buffalo 28 to nothing. That means the Oilers cannot win the AFC Central title. How's that going to affect their play today? I think it's going to affect their play. The fact they're going to be a little disappointed in the fact they can end up the season 12 and 4, yet still finish second. Well, Earl Campbell came into today three yards behind O.J. Anderson in the rushing derby. Now, Anderson is not at this moment having a big day in Chicago. What do you think? Will they let Campbell go after it? I think they'll let him go as far as he wants to go. But individual records are not something they're interested in right now. They need Earl Campbell to be healthy for the playoffs. Now, the Eagles have to have some help today. They need Dallas and Washington ending in a tie for them to win the Eastern Division crown. Now, what will that do as far as their preparation is concerned? Vic Vermeer says his team only knows how to play one way. That's his philosophy, to play hard. I think we are going to see him resting some people later in the game. I think Camfield will see a lot of action today. They're going to work people in, but as he said, and he told us down on the field, I'm not capable of making wholesale changes. Now, Wilbert Montgomery trailed Anderson by 114 yards in that rushing derby. I don't know. He, he, they might let him go for it. Uh, you know, that's a big accomplishment for a football team. And if they could do that, let him go for the record, I think they could do. I, I think they might. All right. We're all set to go now as we go to the playing surface. This is Tony Frisch. He'll be kicking off for the Houston Oilers. And he'll be going to the Pro Bowl. We'll be introducing you to the members of both these football teams, the ones that will go to Honolulu for the 1980 Pro Bowl. Frisch is ready. Back deep. Wally Henry, who also be headed to the Pro Bowl. This is Wally Henry from the five. And Wally Henry at the 19-yard line. He was spun around that time. Excellent defensive effort. And let's set it now offensively. There's Montgomery. And he's joined back there by Leroy Harris. Booby Clark made the tackle on that kickoff. Crepley, one of the most underrated tight ends in the NFL. Carmichael with at least one catch in 111 straight. And that offensive line, you don't hear a lot about it except for Stan Walters, who's going to the Pro Bowl. They've done an outstanding job all year long. And, of course, this young man right here, Ron Jaworski, what a great year he's had. Ron Jaworski coming in here, ranked fourth in the NFC. 18 touchdown tosses, 12 interceptions. From the 19, give to Harris. And Harris is able to move the ball out to the 24-yard line. And let's set defensively now this Houston team, which has 51 sacks this year. Andy Doris put on a lot of weight this year, and I think that's been the big improvement in his play. Curly Cup, Elvin Bethay, what a great player he's been in throughout his career. The linebackers, Washington Bingham, Stringer back after an injury, and Robert Brazil. Brazil all world, isn't he? Boy, he is. J.C. Wilson, Stimrick, Vernon Perry, a rookie that's had an outstanding year, and Mike Reinfeldt with 12 interceptions. Robert Montgomery carrying the football, and he is very close to the first down. As he comes across the 30, he does have the first down. Making the stop was the man we just mentioned, number 69, Andy Doris for the Houston Oilers. The Oilers this year are eighth against the rush. And this Philadelphia football team is fifth in the NFC in their rushing game, primarily because of number 31. Where they take it to you. And we've had so many games this year with Philadelphia, and each week they continue to impress you. And I still think their team is saying, look, we're still looking for identity. We're trying to show people that we are for real. First down. The ball at the 33 and a half yard line. Jaworski, his first pass of the game. Crepley, the big tight end, and he has a first down catch just short of the 50-yard line. Crepley now with 40 catches, a career high. Boy, good play action fake here going back, and, uh, of course, Crepley is outstanding receiver. That is his 39th catch of the season, isn't it? And uh, just found the open spot right in the middle, and you see the, the blue shirts closing in on him because he got still in the middle of that zone. He has had... So many outstanding games. He has a 24-game streak going with at least one catch. And there he has now 40 catches after that last one. 
from the 50-yard line. The Oilers almost jumping offside. Jaworski on the first down. It's going to set up a screen to Harris. Harris had a tough time locating that football. The ball was thrown a little hard for him out in front of him. That's the kind of pass, and as Vermeil, he's concerned about that. Wasn't a real good throw from Ron that time. You know, in a lot of the games we've seen, Gary, this year, Jaworski started out high in a number of them. I think it's because he is so pumped up at the beginning of the game. Boy, he has that rifle arm, and as you mentioned, he throws it through a wall a couple of times. But they, that time, put pretty good pressure on from their right-hand side, and this team is second in the NFL with 51 sacks. The only team that's ahead of them is New England, who went into today's game with a total of 56. That's a bunch. Boy, it is. Second 10 from the 50-yard line. Five defensive backs in now for the Houston Oilers. Jaworski. Robert Montgomery, and Montgomery has got, got about a yard, and that's all. Stemrick did an excellent job coming up from that right cornerback spot. Also, Greg Bingham was over there, and Bingham leading the team in tackles again. He's done it for six consecutive years. An underrated linebacker. Robert Brazil gets all the notoriety here as far as linebacker play, but Bingham is a great, great Great linebacker, I think, and uh, he, as you said, he makes plays all over the field. That time, Stemmerich did come up and defeat the play, though. Third down, nine yards to go, and the Oilers making some changes. Mike Stensrud, their top choice on the second round, has come in out of Iowa State. They'll bring in Jesse Baker, 75, who has 15 and a half of those sacks. Third and nine. Good pressure put on by Stensrud. He gets away. And he just got rid of that one. He was dumped in by Curly Colt back at the 25-yard line. So Jaworski was running for his life. Well, that's a big improvement in their football team this year. They have gone to four down linemen in passing situations. They usually play a 34 defense. This case, in the rushing situation, when the passing situation, they go to four down linemen, and this is why they have the 51 sacks, almost number 52 right there. Uh, Jaworski threw the ball away. This is Runniger, who will be kicking, and back deep is Richard Ellender for the Houston Oilers. Runniger coming in here is fifth in the NFC. He has just been excellent this year. In fact, the Eagles kicking game with Franklin and Runniger may be the biggest improvement in 1979, and what a kick! He really got into that one, and he hit it, and it just did make it into the end zone. Not by much. So the touchback will bring it out to the 20-yard line. That was a 49-yard kick that time by Runniger. Runniger earlier in the year was having some difficulty. One of the problems was when he was kicking the ball, he was bringing his leg across his body. He changed that technique, and you can see what the result has been. start on cue. Put in a fresh set of Champion spark plugs at least once a year. Champion and your engine can make beautiful music together. You can't buy a better plug. Look what's happened to home heating and air conditioning costs. Up and up. Up over 80% in five years. But there's a way you can fight back in your attic. Add another layer of pink Owens Corning fiberglass insulation. Ask your dealer or contractor how much more you need. Fight back against rising fuel costs. Get Owens Corning fiberglass insulation now. It's cheaper than oil. One of the Derek Dolls here, the Houston Oiler cheerleaders. Houston will come out with a different look in that offensive line. David Carter is going to be going at a guard spot, and Conway Heyman will go at right tackle as Morris Towns with that dislocated elbow not starting the game for the Oilers. After the 49-yard kick, first down, carry, Tim Wilson. And Wilson didn't get much on that one. Let's check now the Houston Oiler offensive picture. Everyone knows about Campbell, but Wilson, he's kind of an unsung player. Good football player, good blocker, too. Ken Burrow, boy, what a year he's had. 40 catches this year. Rich Caster and Barbara, underrated, also an underrated tight end, just like Trepley. Leon Gray, he's headed to the Pro Bowl. 
And there is Dan Pastorini, who's had all kinds of miseries this year physically, but he's really come on strong in the last five games. He plays well here in the Astrodome. On a second and ten, he tried to set up a screen to Tim Wilson, but nothing doing on that play. Let's check defensively this Philadelphia Eagle team. And, boy, I tell you, Harris is not having a bad year. He has 14 sacks himself. Claude Humphrey's been a big difference, though, I think, this year, and uh, really fortifying that defensive line. And Johnson headed to the Pro Bowl. And that linebacking core, Robinson, what a shot in the arm he gave them when they moved him into that inside position. Boy, they needed somebody when they lost Fergie. And that secondary, well, Shira back there going along with Edwards. Edwards thus far with three interceptions. Renard Wilson going to the all-rookie team this year. He was picked on the UPI all-rookie team. Pastorini to throw on third and ten. Third receiver is Rob Carpenter, and that's going to bring up a kicking situation. Good pressure put on that time. Cliff Parsley will come in and kick. You know, Pastorini had a very interesting, very unusual thing. He had a viral infection that caused nerve damage in his throwing arm. He said he couldn't throw the ball. Talking with him down on the field, he says, I couldn't throw the thing 15 yards. He said, and I couldn't hit a wall with it from 15 yards. And then he got hurt in the second game, and so he's just battled uphill all year long. But now they're down the stretch. He's playing like the Pastorini of a year ago. This is Wally Henry. Henry missed four games this year with a severe leg injury. But he still was selected to play in the Pro Bowl. Parsley, fine kick. Henry from the 36-yard line. Look at the guy go to the 50, 45, 40. Wally Henry's inside the 35-yard line of Houston. Boy, what an exciting football player this man is. He's not very big, 5'8", 170 pounds. Ted Thompson hitting. And the Eagles have excellent field position. A 45-yard kick, but a 30-yard return by Henry. Yeah. Oh. oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Ooh, it's not too bad, except for those stale clothes. I wonder how we'd look in something fresh like this if we did Hager slacks. Or a wool Hager sport coat and slacks. Even a Hager vested suit. Huh, cantaloupe? Nope, let's have a church wedding. Hager, because looking good makes you feel good. Boy, this is the express line. In business, the more efficiently you use your time, the more money you make. Time is money. So if you're spending hours dictating letters to far-off places, and hours are spent typing them... I've got other work to do. Kick the letter habit. Pick up your phone and give them a ring. The phone turns your time into money. Tuesday, Jackson's first love returns from a sordid past, and he may make the biggest mistake of his life. The White Shadow moves to Tuesdays at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Well, we welcome those viewers who have been watching the Minnesota-New England game. As you can see, the final, the Patriots coming from behind to win that one. I'm Gary Bender with Sonny Jurgensen. Right now, the ball at the 35-yard line of Houston after a 30-yard return of a punt by Wally Henry. This is Wilbert Montgomery. And Montgomery dragging tacklers for close to five yards. There is a flag, however, at the 27-yard line. Vernon Perry, number 32, and there he is, Bum Phillips. He is an original. He's a real character. What a nice guy he is. Talking with him last night at the uh, hotel where we were staying. So much fun. He says, I'm going to get you a better pair of boots than you got. Boy, he has some boots, he doesn't does. he? does. Would you see Vermeil's boots yeah, today? Yeah, Dick Vermeil has some ostrich boots with the Eagles logo on it. Let's listen now. Number 59 on the defense. Face mask. Be a first down. That's Red Cashin. That's Ted Washington who was guilty of that face mask violation. Now, this game, Sonny, really could affect the Washington Redskins, couldn't it? Well, it's, I think it's down to about uh, 10 points now as far as the point spread, the net point difference between the Redskins and the Chicago Bears. Tampa winning earlier clinched the division title, so Chicago now fighting for the wild card. Leroy Harris trying to pick up some running room, and Curly Culp was there to drop him. Curly Culp in his 12th year, 32 years old, as you look at Ron Jaworski. Take a look at this, and you just see it. You're seeing it right from the end zone. 
Boy, good shot this is. You see right up the middle. See the good play that time by Culp. Playing off that center, Guy Morris, and just moving with the play and making it right at the line of scrimmage. For those of you who just joined us, Philadelphia wins today. Washington and Dallas tie in Dallas. The Eagles would win the Eastern Division crown. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> Second down, virtually 10 yards to go. Jaworski and Montgomery can't hang on, but there's a flag again on the play. I tell you, this Oiler forward wall, they come after you. You can see why they have 51 sacks. Every time Jaworski's released the ball, he's had somebody right on him. The thing you really need to do against the Houston Oilers is not put yourself in that third, second, and long situation. First down, very important to make some ground, move the ball so you don't get in that long passing situation where they can put that pressure on you. Brad Cashin will explain this penalty. Offside was against Houston. It's going to bring up second down, five yards to go. John Spagnola comes in along with Keith Kreppley. Maybe that's how they're getting to the passer so quickly. They're lining up offside, Gary. They have been getting to the passer all year long and legally. No score from the Astrodome. Jaworski. Excellent protection this time, and a big tight end, Spagnola, a rookie from Yale who started the year with New England, made quite a catch at the eighth. That'll be a first and goal. Vernon Perry defending on the play. Boy, he was right with him. What an excellent throw that uh, Jaworski made. He fakes to the back coming across. Again, he had, uh, I think his cadence is bothering the Houston Oilers a little bit. He goes back. He gets some pressure from behind, but look at the throw he makes, getting himself set. Good catch by Spagnola. Spagnola, the all-time leading receiver at Yale. He's 6'4", a 240-pounder. He was a ninth-round draft pick for New England, picked up as a free agent. First and goal from the eighth. Looked like the order's offside. Harris carrying the ball. The right side of the Houston defense fired off the mark. And so that would give them very good situation moving the ball inside the five yard line looked like Bingham and Stringer the linebackers up there close may have jumped I think they moved a little early at all sides against Houston, all sides against Houston again in that showdown in Dallas the Washington Redskins are leading three to nothing in the first quarter Mark Mosley field goal Washington if they would win that of course they win the division if they lose it then they have to be concerned about that Chicago St. Louis game number 65 on the defense, offsides, still first down. That's Bethay jumping off. Bethay, 33 years old. He played with the Oilers when they weren't a winning team in 1968 through 75. And he says, I've never had so much fun as I've had the last couple of years. On the four yard line, first and goal. Jaworski bootlegging the ball, and he's going to take it in for the touchdown. Ron Jaworski faked everyone out on that one. A question I always have on something like that, Sonny, is did he tell the team he was going to do that? Yes, he, yes, he did, because it was a bootleg play. Watch Carmichael goes to the corner of the end zone. He was running a pass pattern. You see there Ron faking a thing, but uh, the coverage went back to take care of Carmichael. And it allowed him time to make a nice little run around the end. You see it again, the arm fake. Yeah, he told everybody he was doing this. A design play and a very good call, very smart call. That's his second touchdown rushing this year. He has 115 yards, which is very good for a quarterback. This is Tony Franklin, the point after attempt. And he hit the upright. Did it make it through? No, it did not. Tony Franklin, who this year had missed two PATs, misses this one. Obviously, a very important one. And so the Eagles with a six to nothing lead and Tony Franklin playing in his home state of Texas after playing at Texas A&M. How many times have you wanted to pack it all in and take off? Well, with Hertz economy fares, the time to go is now. Our subcompacts are only $14.95 a day, weekends, and just $98 a week, all with free mileage. Larger cars are only dollars more a day. And if you rent for three weekdays or more, Hertz has special economy fares for that, too. Hertz economy fares. Now you can't afford not to rent from number one. A big green football team and endless yellow sea. A cherry pie and orange sky. The bluest eyes you'll ever see. Yes, America's true colors from Fairmont GE. 
TV brings you America's colors vivid and lifelike. And our special VIR2 circuit adjusts the color automatically. It's America, true colors, come through on GE. GE, we bring good things to life. Let's go back to that miss point after by Tony Franklin. See if there's anything wrong with the hole here. Looks like the ball's put down, the strings come to the front, he just hooks it. You saw him spin the ball around, though, didn't he, to get the laces forward? Yes, he did. This is Richard Allender bringing the ball back for the Oilers, and as he hit at the 20-yard line. Excellent tackle that time by Louis Jamona. And so at the 20-yard line, Houston will have it. 14-yard return. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Houston Oilers and the National Football League is prohibited. So Houston will have it at the 20-yard line, their second possession of this first quarter of play with 9.28 remaining in it. There's Dante Pastorini. Hits 57% of his passes here in the Astrodome, but on the road it's been a different story. Here's Earl Campbell. Campbell, his first carry of the day. And he'll get five yards. Now remember, he trailed O.J. Anderson by three yards in the rushing derby. And there's the score that we mentioned earlier, Washington on top of Dallas in Irving, Texas. What a game that is. John Shira making the stop on Campbell. The three, should say probably the four men in the rushing derby are Campbell. He's three behind Anderson. Coming into today, Peyton was 113 yards behind Anderson. Montgomery, 114. Anderson was not having a big day when we last checked in that game in Chicago. That's right, Ed. Something like 44 yards in the third quarter. This is Tim Wilson. Reggie Wilkes giving chase. And Wilson has a first down. Tim Wilson, he hasn't gained all that much this year. A little over 300 yards, but he has a first down run. Herman Edwards eventually knocked him down. Wilson out of the University of Maryland. He was their third round draft pick in 77, their first choice that year. Thing about the Houston Sunny is they have pretty good stable running backs. They can use Coleman, Carpenter to back up Campbell and Wilson. A big problem they had started with, Gary, this year was the injuries in their offensive line, but uh, getting Leon Gray certainly fortified that position. Carpenter now in the lineup. Also, Tim Wilson. There's Carpenter going in motion. This is Earl Campbell. And Campbell picking up five, maybe six yards. As he is just relentless when he carries a football. He has a lot of records that he could tie and break before the day is over. He's going for his seventh straight 100-yard day. Just an amazing runner. A little pitch back here, and you see the guards pull. Fisher and David Carter getting out. Carter makes an excellent block there on LeMaster. <laughs> the, the first, uh, they, they miss a block on uh, Herman Edwards, but he still picks up about six, seven yards. And the first down to the 36-yard line. Pastorini end around to Rich Caster. Caster to the 40 and to the 42-yard line. Caster, big, lanky guy at six foot five, motoring to the outside. Reggie Wilkes, Jerry Robinson, the number one draft pick out of UCLA, over to make the stop. Going to bring up second down, still four yards to go from the 42. There's Caster. They picked him up last year from the Jets in a fine acquisition for this team. We have a final now on that Pittsburgh game, and they didn't waste any time clinching the division, did they? Well, they did, no. 28 to nothing. Well, what a year. What a football team, huh? In motion goes Caster. Give to Wilson. And Wilson close to the first down as he crosses the 45, just about to the 46. You know, we talk about Pittsburgh being a great football team, but both of these teams you're looking at right here beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. In fact, Houston did it in a course of 19 days. They've really had a tough finish this year. And this game was played in a driving rainstorm. Neil O'Donohue kicked a field goal to win it at 8.50. You don't think Tampa Bay didn't have peanut butter in their <laughs> mouth today? Three to nothing. And they three weeks previous had thought they were going to clinch that title and couldn't get it done. Let's see if they got the first down. They're going to be just short. Bring up a third down for Houston. Well, Houston's finish has really been spectacular, beating Dallas, winning, of course, Monday night against Pittsburgh. They have clinched the home field advantage. But they'll have to wait until way late Monday to know who they're going to play. 
He's not very happy with that just because they got a third down situation. They have to wait on that San Diego Denver game being played Monday night. They got a double wing formation on a third and short yardage. Carpenter in motion. Campbell. Look at him cut. Campbell across the 45 into the 43 yard line area. Jerry Robinson made the stop. And this sellout crowd here in the Astrodome. What enthusiasm they have stirred up here in the Lone Star State. They're certainly doing a good job on short yardage. It's not not sure exactly what they but both times they have gone to the left on their short yardage with just a pitch back and letting him just find the opening that he needs got outside of him again boy and he's a load to get down isn't he they list him at 224 pounds but I've never seen a man with bigger thighs bigger legs than him they said he was 240 in high school Can you imagine in high school first down call Tim Wilson carrying, and Wilson will be short of the 40-yard line. Claude Humphrey, Frank LaMaster making the stop. This Houston football team playing in this tough Central Division. They could win their 12th game today. That would be the most in the history of their franchise and still not win the division. That's it. And I really do feel in talking with Pastorini and some of the players on the field how disappointed they are that because they realize they can finish 12-4 and four and still finish second. Disappointing for them. Second and seven, Campbell having trouble. And he's going to get out of that trouble. 35-30, and that shows you the greatness of this guy to have all that difficulty and still manage to pick up a first down. Amazing back. All on his own. All the blocking. He just loses a handle on the ball right here. It's a good pitch. You see the pitch is right in his hands. Took his eyes off of it, but... All the floor of the play and the pursuit is going left, so what else does it do but go back to the right side and pick up a first down? You know, Sonny, we talk about his strength, but I'm always amazed by his quickness and speed. You know what? Campbell going off the field now. He's off to a pretty good start in this football game if he's seriously considering that rushing title. First down, the ball at the 26-yard line. There's that end around again to Caster. This time, Jerry Robinson's over there. There is a flag on the play. Did you see Robinson react to that play? Now, he's the inside linebacker on the near side of the field, and he got over there and caught up with him. A misdirection play. That's the second time they've called that end-around play. Penalty's going to go against Houston. You know, Robinson, we're talking to Carl Peterson, the director of pro personnel for the Eagles. He just says that Robinson is just going to be great. There's just no question. It's just a matter of time. He's not as big as he's going to get he weighs maybe 220 pounds but he's just a great athlete when he wasn't even playing and wasn't starting just playing special teams talking with Chuck Bednarik and if he anybody knows anything about number 60 on the offense was holding still first down that would be Ed Fisher go ahead Sonny and talking with Chuck about him and there's a man that should know something about linebacker play he said to me that uh, Robinson was going to be a great linebacker so it's going to be first down now, 20 yards to go. From the 36-yard line, the 10-yard penalty. Pasarini with time. And it's almost picked up by John Shira. Shira collided with Herman Edwards, or he may have had it. John Shira, who has two interceptions this year. Boy, this was close. It certainly was. He, he throws the ball on a line here, trying to, to beat the, the, the football with the coverage and you see the collision right there and shower comes up a little slowly but boy that could be a problem if they lose him they've already lost bernard wilson there's a guy that just does everything for this football team the washington redskins are leading the cowboys now 10 to nothing in the first quarter that has to be the most unpredictable team i've ever watched they've just amazed me all year long renfro has come in at wide receiver for houston second down and 20. This is two Renfro, but it's picked up by Bobby Howard. Howard to the 50, and Howard out of bounds at the 45-yard line. That's his third interception, the 37th of his career. And this 34-year-old veteran out of San Diego State has really been an instrumental factor in this defense. Well, he almost had his other pass picked off, and he comes right back. And this time, Howard playing uh, soft, comes right back up, reacts to the football, makes the interception. Good return. I think Houston's a little flat. They didn't expect the Philadelphia Eagles to be playing with this much intensity. 
Doesn't surprise me. Dick Vermeil's teams don't know how else to play, do they? Introducing the first new truck of the 80s, the only American 4x4 pickup with independent front suspension, the 1980 Ford. And for the first time ever, we're going to run a four-wheel drive over these 4x4 beams next to this wall of light bulbs. A rod is attached to the front wheel and another to the door. Now watch as Ford's unique 4x4 independent front suspension steps over the beams independently. The wheel rod is breaking bulbs, but the door rod doesn't. See the first new truck of the 80s. It's built. Ford Tough. A lot of foreign bars who want to stay fast and loose, and you don't want to get filled up. That's why I drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, the taste is great. And even though a lot of people don't think pool is strenuous, let me tell you something. You can work up a real good thirst, even when you're just showing off. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Next Saturday at 1.30 Eastern, CBS Sports presents the Sun Bowl from El Paso, Texas, with the Washington Huskies taking on the Longhorns of Texas. You'll say you saw it on CBS Sports. Well, Pastor Rainey just moments ago throwing his 17th interception of the year, which ties his mark of last season. Howard picking off his third pass. And there is Pastor Rainey. Almost had an interception on the previous play. And then the next time, the Eagles came up with it. For the Eagles this year, they now have a total of 20 interceptions. Robert Montgomery can go nowhere because Robert Brazil, who's played now in the last four Pro Bowls, counting this one coming up over to make the stop. Stan Walters is a spokesman for the Eagles throughout the course of the year, and we ask him about his Philadelphia Eagle team. The Philadelphia Eagles turned their program around four years ago when Coach Ramil signed on with us, and since then we've been coming on as a strong team, and last week was a very disappointing loss to the Dallas Cowboys. But if we can gain from that, as we've gained in past adversity, we'll be ready for the playoffs this year, no matter who we have to play in the first round, either Washington or Dallas. It's been a tremendous year. We're 10 and 5 with a chance for our 11th win, and we're looking forward to coming back to Philadelphia with our fans and our stadium. There's help. Carmichael. Carmichael to the 11 yard line. Vernon Perry making the stop. A flag is thrown. And now Carmichael's streak has been extended to 112 games with at least one catch. Boy, a good protection this time. Watch that Eagle offensive line do a job. Morris does it. All the pressure went behind him. A good crossing pattern. And Perry hooked him in. He's going to get called for that. that Penalty is going to go against Vernon Perry. Carmichael. After the completion. Carmichael now with 51 catches. That was good for 36 yards. Carmichael. <laughs> you can't say enough about him this year. The pressure he's played under. Trying to break that record by Danny Abramowitz. Unnecessary roughness. Number 32 on the defense. Perry's a hitter. He played in the Canadian Football League for Montreal, and they really like him. Right at the end of the play, when he was, he got behind uh, Carmichael a little bit. Looked like he was trying to figure out how am I going to get this big man down. He is a problem. First and goal now at the five-yard line. The Eagles with a six-to-nothing lead. They missed the point after. Jaworski to Harris, and that play just didn't get underway. No mix-up in the backfield. Now the defensive line just really stuffed that. They came through, and they defeated the play that time. Give them some credit. They really stuffed that offensive line of the Eagles that time and uh, stopped it right. No place for Harris to run. Curly Culp, see him, number 78. He was one of the ringleader of that last play. Culp was an outstanding wrestler in college at Arizona State, the NCAA champion. He's 6'1", weighs 265 pounds. I don't think there's an ounce of fat. Second and goal from the five. Jaworski, Carmichael, check that, right. Donald Smith over there with J.C. Wilson on him. Pretty well covered in that area, wasn't yeah, he? Good coverage that time. Nobody to go to. He did the smart thing by throwing. If he goes to Crefley, he may get it in. 
but he was a little late thinking of making the decision to go to Crepley that time and wisely threw the ball out of the end zone. That was J.C. Wilson back there. He has six interceptions. Do you realize that the Oilers have 34 interceptions this year? That's because of that good pass, Royce. The record is 36 for Houston. That was set 1962. Third and goal now. This is Carmichael. Wilson again defending. Boy, they went into that wall pretty hard. Wilson on Carmichael, and so they hold, and they're going to have to attempt the field goal. He had what he wanted. He had single coverage. You can see how upset he is. If he had a little shorter, I think Carmichael would have had it. As tall as he is, you would figure maybe he should have gotten it up a little higher, huh? No, he just overthrew him a little bit, and he's a little disappointed. But you have to make a very accurate throw on that type of uh, pass, and we've seen him a couple of times. You see Dick talking to him about it. Tony Franklin to come in and attempt a 22-yard field goal. Shiloh to hold. Franklin this year has hit 21 of 29. And he powers that one, no question about it. Tony Franklin with his 22nd field goal. The record for the Eagles is 24, held by Tom Dempsey. That was in 1973. Tonight on CBS, catch a brand new edition of 60 Minutes, followed by Archie Bunker's Place, where Barney takes a fall, but Archie howls. Then there's male rivalry on One Day at a Time, followed by Eric Estrada, Lonnie Anderson, and more on the fourth annual Circus of the Stars. It's all on CBS tonight. Sonny, we've been handed a note here on that Chicago-St. Louis game. O.J. Anderson is out of the game the third quarter with a knee injury, unknown to the extent of it. Thus far for the day, Anderson 14 carries for 39 yards. So that obviously affects Earl Campbell and Wilbert Montgomery here today, but we certainly hope that that sensational rookie is not seriously hurt. Well, what a great year he's had, regardless if he wins the thing or not. Dick Vermeil, last year the NFC coach of the year, and he's talking things over with Ron Jaworski, and I don't think he's too happy right now. I think the play that you mentioned before, you know, Crepley, he passed up Crepley then, but I think if he had wanted to throw him, he could have gotten a touchdown going to him. Nine to nothing, Eagles of the lead, here comes Allender. Allender with an excellent run. He just kept going, there's a flag on the play. He gets it out to the 39-yard line. Scott Fitzke, the rookie out of Penn State, made the tackle. This is one area that really Houston has not excelled in, and that is kickoff and punt returns. But that time, Ellender did quite a job, a 32-yard return on the kickoff. They started the year with Billy White Shoes Johnson, and he sustained a very serious knee injury. In fact, he tore all four ligaments in the knee, and he's rehabilitating that knee right now. He's at each one of the games standing on the sideline, but what an exciting young performer he is. Big discussion going long on. Long discussion about this uh, penalty, maybe offsetting penalties. There are two flags down. This Houston team does not have great speed, Sonny, but boy, they're physical. And when you have a guy by the name of Campbell, you can, you can really hide a lot of your, your shortcomings, can't you? Here we go. Let's see what it is. Oops. Holding. Face mask. Offsetting. So Red Cashin still talking it over <laughs> with his troops. Where do they go with the football? Looks like one of our production <laughs> meetings before the game. <laughs> trying to figure out what we're going to do, right? I can figure out what, which one's Mr. Rowe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get this settled soon, folks. Just hang in there with us. 2.56 remaining in this first quarter of play. Now he's going to explain it. Holding. Number 63 on the receivers. Face mask. Number 67 on the kickers. It will be the receiver's ball at the spot of their foul. First down. All right. Try to check all those numbers. That's Lynn Burnham for the Eagles that was guilty of that. And Atlanta came from behind in that game. San Francisco had the lead early in that. San Francisco finishing the year with two wins. Atlanta with a disappointing year, but they finished kind of strong, haven't they? They played well the last couple of weeks, and look at Baltimore over the Giants. How about that? That's a surprise to me. Baltimore, 31 to 7. The Giants uh, didn't look good last week against St. Louis either. The other guy that was guilty on that play was Steve Baumgartner for Houston. So the two culprits have been 
caught, and the ball is just short of the 25-yard line. Number 34, Jerry Robinson making the stop just short of the 30-yard line. That would be such a tendency or a temptation when you're a quarterback, when you have somebody this great, not to give it to him every play because you realize you're going to have a successful play. Good line charge that time. David Carter coming off, uh, making a good charge into Robinson. Robinson plays the block off and finally makes a tackle, but not that He picked up about seven yards anyway. Isn't that something? Last Monday night he accomplished that. You mentioned carries. He set an NFL record this year for carries, 352 coming into this game. So he is earning every penny. Flag on the play as Campbell this time doesn't get a lot. Maybe to the 32. I think the man in motion was going toward the line of scrimmage that time. And there's another final. Cincinnati it beats their big rival, Cleveland. Cleveland had an outside shot of still making the playoffs prior to that one. And now, of course, that seals their doom. Penalty going to go against Houston. Man in motion was going toward the line of scrimmage before the snap of the football. Let's talk about Campbell a little bit, Sonny. He has 10 100 yard days, 17 in two years. Let's listen here. Number 88 of the offense moving forward at the snap, still second down. Well, you've got the great eyes there, Mr. Jurgensen. Well, you got to pay attention. <laughs> but anyway, I started to say, if he would get a 100-yard day today, he would tie the record held by O.J. Simpson, who had 11 100-yard days back in 1973. He's going for his seventh straight 100-yard day, which would also tie O.J.'s record. And here he comes. 35, 40, you see something? Out to the 42-yard line on a first down run. Boy, he showed quickness on that play. Quick amazing run, amazing. You know, I, I think what his coach said kind of sums it up best of all. He said, Earl may not be in a class by himself, but whatever class he's in, it doesn't take long to call the roll. I and you can, see, you can see why right there. 17-yard run to the 43-yard line. What was it he also said? Bum is one of the most quotable people. He said something about he is what water is to a man in the desert. <laughs> First down from the 43. Ken Burrow to the bottom of the screen. Nine to nothing. The Eagles with the lead. Two minutes remaining in this first quarter. Pastorini. And this is John Budding, the second interception of the day. Budding, his second of the year. And Pastorini is not throwing the ball that accurately. Uh, he didn't read the coverage and He was very late with the football. And uh, he really felt that he was going to be able to throw the football against Philadelphia. He felt that backs played loose. But I don't think he, the backs might play a little loose back there, but the linebackers are getting good drops at time, and Bunning picks one off. You know, that uh, profile of Bum Phillips reminds me of a quarterback that used to wear number nine. Boy, you don't coach with your stomach. Do you throw with your stomach? <laughs> <laughs> but you are just a... Uh, You've really kept your way down now. I'm proud of you. Slim. Slim. Yes, sir. He sure is. From the 40-yard line. And Jaworski to Carmichael again, and he's wide open. That's a first down catch, just short of the 45. Ted Washington over to make the stop. Washington, you can see the right hand heavily wrapped. He broke that hand, missed one of the games this year. Go back and watch Carmichael on this 15-yard pickup. You know, when you got the leading receiver, you wonder why, how man can get open this way. He just he comes across underneath, just just trying to find the open spot. Look at him. He, nobody around him. Here's the blue shirt coming into the picture. Washington finally dragging him down. But you'd think that they'd get some people around the leading receiver. I would think so. Made that look easy. First down at the 46-yard line, Montgomery. Montgomery, a great cutback runner, maybe the best in the game today. Close to the 40-yard line, Greg Pingham out of Purdue over there to make the tackle once again. You know, Montgomery is not small. He's 5'10", he weighs 195. He's just the dark on strong, his legs. And he's worked hard at that in the offseason. Boy, looking at those stats, they weren't too shabby, were they? Not too bad. First eagle in history to have back-to-back 1,000-yard -back years had seven 100-yard days himself, and he has the best day of the year. He had 197 yards against the Browns earlier this year. Campbell had the second best, 195. 
Here he goes. Look at that cut. He avoided the tackle. A flag on the play as he's inside the 40 to the 39. A lot of penalties in this game. This is against Philadelphia. A lot of penalties, and we still have 25 seconds to go in this first quarter. Oh, I'll back him up. Call. Greg Bingham, number 54. Okay, you have to do anything you can to keep that imposing forward wall off your quarterback and your running backs. They are something. Number 50 of the offense holding. Still second down. It's Guy Morris trying to stay alive against Curly Culp. When you get Curly Culp on your nose, they should allow you to hold. Look at that forward wall. Doris has nine and a half sacks. Culp has three. But Thay only has one and a half. But his backup, Baker, has 15 and a half. Stensrud has had two sacks in the last two games. Second down, 15 yards to go. From the 49. Dorsky and he has his man at the 49 yard line. That's Billy Campfield. Just across into Houston into the field. Billy Campfield, who's been a very valuable member of this football team. He's done everything they've asked him to do. This time Houston played a little soft, gave him the pass underneath because they set up. They're still about third and 12, so they gave him that pass. You see linebackers just coming up as we're going to run out of time here in the first quarter. Billy Campfield with his 13th catch of the year. There's our score. Philadelphia missing the point after. They lead it 9 to nothing.